No, you're I'm, allowed. I'm allowed. You're allowed. Yeah. Okay. Allowed. We're we're special. we're we're okay. We're live. <laughs> we're pick, picking <laughs> picking up. This is a video on on um uh, yeah. Let's see, let's see if I get there. It's Bengali gangsters. I am Bengali. Salam alaikum. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay. Disclaimer, Samira is not a Bengali gangster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, all right, so uh, trouble with, with dodgy people, yeah. Well, I've, I've definitely had a, lot of, I've had a lot of experience with trouble with do dodgy people and uh, lots of dodgy builders, dodgy tenants, so um, that's the thing. So the thing, the thing with, um, you know, whether, whether um, you meet someone I've, I've met a lot of people who I've, I've, I thought looked like um, they're really, really trustworthy, uh, you know, tenants or builders, and they just look really look nice people, and they're going to do the work, and you pay them the money, and then you realise they, they rip you off, uh, and uh, and that is um, now the thing is with that is immediately I'm pretty sure I've done the same in the past lifetime or in this lifetime. Um, so I had the thing of like, you know, I don't have to go back that very that far because I used to work in the stock market, and uh, let's say I wasn't very honest when I was selling investments. I won't say too much more on camera, but uh, uh, but uh, I think you can get a vague idea of what that would mean, sales tactics and being being in uh, with investments. And you know, I had this thing where as soon as I came out of the stock market. There was a financial magazine, and I thought well, that, that that investment looks pretty good, and so I put I put down my name and phone number, and they I think they sold my name and phone number to everyone in the whole world, <laughs> you know, to every single dodgy brokerage and investment house. For, I was getting calls from America, I was getting calls from the UK, and you know they were these people who you couldn't get them off the phone, you know, and and uh, they would ring me up, and I would like. And they, they were being exactly the way I used to be. And they'd have a hundred, they'd have a hundred ways of like, they would never take no for an answer. And, and, and so I had that. And then, you know, the builders and stuff, you know, it's like, so the, one of the things to, to recognize is what, I, is, um, what Hawkins says was the anti-karma prayer. So as immediately someone does something horrible to you, is to immediately see, and you'll probably find nine times out of ten if you muscle test it, like have I have I been dodgy around money, uh, or via, you know, like in a past lifetime you might have been selling carriages with broken <laughs> with broken wheels, you know, and you had this like innocent trustworthy face, and people would come and say, uh, you say this is this is one of the best carriages we have, horse Ooh. you know with the best horses made with the best wheels in the country uh, and, uh, and you know it's full whack but you can trust me and then you found and actually you knew that the wheel was broken on the third wheel and it's probably going to give out in two days so you, you probably find something like that in the past lifetime so immediately I'm doing my anti-karma prayer because the data that's showing up is this person's irritating me because they're highly dishonest so I need to clear the data so immediately what Hawkins says is just, you can intuit what the opposite is. So whatever you think he's done you wrong, you did that wrong to someone else. So you can, so I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who sold dodgy vehicles to others. Now you can intuit, the prayer would be either in this, could be in this lifetime and past life, but if you haven't got it in this lifetime, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who, who sold dodgy vehicles in past lifetimes to others. Now that, I would do that over and over again like a mantra. What, um, while you're working on it, because that's going to be clearing the karma um, of, of why this guy is, is doing it for you. So everything that's coming up, so everything that comes up, you, you, all the thoughts you have about the guy who's ripped you off, you know, he sold me something dishonestly, he's not taken responsibility, um, he's, got a, he's got a gang of people behind him. Well, you probably had a gang of people behind you in a past lifetime. So... Um, uh, you know, like I, so you just do the opposite and you pray, you put it into God's infinite light and love, pray for miracles and transcendence, pray for forgiveness for the one in me who in past lifetimes sold dodgy vehicles. 
and placed the one in me who in past lifetimes conned people out of money because they were naive. So you, you do all of that. Um, if you feel under fear of threat, well, uh, maybe you were part of a threatening group in, in a past lifetime. So you also had the power of being able to threaten people who, who you, who you fraud. So I would do all of those, those things. Now, in terms of do you, um, do, uh, do you, uh, the thing about, well, I'd say sometimes the lesson is to confront the people and sometimes not to. That would be, that would come out through muscle testing. Uh, so, you know, sometimes there can be lots of multiple issues, like should you speak up? and say, look, um, you know, this is dodgy, uh, you're, you, you've taken advantage of me, or do you just let it go and transcend it? Sometimes if you do the transcendence work, it automatically resolves itself. And sometimes the universe wants you to um, intervene, or speak, speak up, to clear the lessons. So you just have to intuit that. But generally speaking, I would pray a lot around it before, and take spiritual counsel to see whether you should uh, intervene or not around the situation. But um, I sort of see everything, nothing can happen by accident in this world. I'm, I'm never a victim. I can only have karmic undoing of situations uh, and I can clear, um, there, you know, I like the way I sort of frame it, there's, there's karmic undoing the hard way and there's karmic undoing through lots of prayer and transcending the issue before it hits you in the face. So, um, so sometimes when it's hitting you in the face, you know, like Hawkins said, if, if you're married and your wife drives off with a Mercedes with another man, then you laugh and say that pays that one off. So you, you know you've cleared that karma with that particular situation. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say with... Um, Oh yeah, and also just if unmanageability and lots and lots of things going wrong. Uh, that is also there is a thing like if you feel now sometimes when you're spiritually disconnected there can be lots of unmanageability, but also in a past lifetime, you one could have affected another individual such that their whole life became chaos and unmanageable. So again. You know, pray, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who has inflicted an unmanageability onto others in this lifetime and past lifetimes. Because let's say, um, you know, um, I go into a bakery shop and rub all the donuts, and that was their dinner, you know, and their evening meal, and they go hungry and they can't feed the kids. That creates a lot of you know, that's something you can't mop up that easily. So, you, you know, so you, can, you might have also, you can intuit that you might have been a, co a causal agent of unmanageability in past lifetime. But the, the way to do it, so unmanageability is just a reflection of the level of consciousness. So as you transcend that, uh, you know, that will, that will help you to, to release that.